Hey guys, hey guys, how's it going? So this is Josh with TechZone UK. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up your own PFSense file network. Now what I'm going to be using is this old HP uh, tower computer. It's got like 1 gig of RAM and an AMD dual core CPU and it runs on hardly any power whatsoever. So it's great for this use. Now, we're going to be installing PFSense, which is a free BSD um, open source uh, firewall for our um, for our PC here. I'm going to be showing you the whole steps of installing everything and making everything work. So what I'm going to do at the moment is, uh, at the moment, um, I've got a disc there. Let me just see if I can grab it. I have to hold the camera in one hand. Maybe it doesn't work. Maybe not the best place to put a disc to get it scratched, but you know, oh well. Um, I'm going to turn off this PC, again maybe not the best thing to hard shut down this PC but it's an old one so not really too fussed about it. Um, but basically in the back I have a 100 megabit ethernet card um, and a gigabit NIC as well. Um, so the gigabit NIC is for my LAN so I'll be having a gigabit uh, LAN and my um, WAN is 100 megabit because obviously I don't need uh, any faster than that whatsoever. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to turn this on, to open the disk drive. If this actually wants to open with this little door, because this door puts a lot of pressure on the drive so it doesn't open up. Uh, let's see if I can get this to open up. Uh, whack the disk in the drive. Shut the door. Turn the machine off. Wait a couple of seconds, make sure all the USB keyboard plugged in there. And we're going to turn this on. We're going to come up to our desktop here and we're going to go into the boot menu. Sorry about the glare, I'll turn that off in a sec. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to come down, we're going to select CD DVD drive and hit enter. Okay, so there we have the lights off. And what we're going to do is we're just going to wait for this to boot. You can tell it's booting from the CD by having a CD loader. Um, during this install, it's good to have like a notepad document open. I've got one open uh, just there, so I'm going to keep that open. Um, so here, what we're going to do is we're just going to let this go straight in. We're not going to touch anything. Um, it's probably going to go into boot PFSense anyway. Uh, you know, so um, let this go straight in just here. You can see just here I have a PFSense live CD. That's what you want. I'll put a link in the description so you guys can download it. Obviously when I do the main configuration on the computer I won't be using my camera, this is just because I can't record. So really for this you only need two network cards, you just need a one for the LAN, one for the WAN. My WAN one uh, is going to be going, getting an IP from the DHCP which is the router downstairs, so I won't be getting a public IP, although I have ordered a, um, a modem, ADSL2 modem. Um, so I'm going to put that in bridge mode, um, so now I can uh, set up uh, getting a public IP for my box that way, I don't have to use double NAT or anything like that. Um, so uh, pretty much we're going to go into installer mode, so we're going to press I. What this is going to do, oh, press, oh wrong keyboard, I, <laughs> press my main uh, keyboard then. And what this is going to do is it's going to start installing the main version. Um, of PFSense. So here I'm just going to go down to accept these settings and hit enter and I'm going to go on to quick and easy install I'm going to go OK. OK so we've got on this mode here I'm just going to use the standard kernel so I'm going to hit next again or enter and then here it's going to ask to reboot here. OK so you're going to want to eject the disk and as you can see it's going to be booting into uh, PF sense here, so I'm just going to let this boot up. So once you move the disk, it's obviously going to try and boot into the operating system that's just been installed onto the hard drive. Now here, what I'm going to do is just leave it, and this is going to go straight in and start configuring everything just here. Okay, so now we're on to the main bit really of the install to set up our NICs or network interface cards. Um, and basically, as I said before, I want to use my 100 megabit line here as my WAN, which is that nick there, which is the RL2, and I'll use my gigabit LAN for my WAN. 
So it's RL0 for, I'm just going to make a note of this, so RL0 equals uh, lat, uh, 1 and RE0 equals 1. Because obviously you can just tell by this one here is the uh, gigabit ethernet. And this is just 100 meg ethernet. So the first question we got asked at the bottom is, do you want to set up VLANs, yes or no? I'm going to hit no, we don't want to set up VLANs. VLANs are just virtual LANs. So basically you can separate one LAN into lots. So I'm going to hit no. And then the first question we get here is, enter the WAN interface. So as we know, the WAN interface is RL0. And then for the LAN interface, it was, so here we're going to set RE0 and hit enter. And we're not going to set up anything else, so we're just going to hit enter again. And so here we go, look. Uh, RL0 equals the WAN, and the RE0 equals the LAN, uh, which I think is right. So what we're going to do is, do you want to proceed? We're just going to hit yes, white, and hit enter. Now what this is going to do is start configuring everything here. Now you won't start to get internet access until we start setting things up on the computer, so uh, I wouldn't worry about it for the time being. And we get boot up complete. And there we go. We now have everything set up, sort of. Ah, so, as I said before, the WAN here, um, WAN RL0, which is fine, has got an IP of 192.168.1.102 from the DHCP server. That's because my router has DHCP enabled. Soon it won't. Um, I'll have it disabled and this IP here will be a public IP, so the one I get from my ISP. However, we want our LAN IP to be on a different subnet because it literally just will not let us on if you have the LAN and the WAN on the same subnet. It just doesn't work. So what we need to do is come down to set interfaces IP address, right? So what we're going to do is go to option 2 and we want to enable or edit option 2 which is LAN, so it's going to type 2 then enter. And it says enter the new LAN IP address. Now, to make things easy and different, I'm just going to make my LAN class A. I know there's a hell of a lot of um, IPs on class A. And I probably won't use class A. Well, I won't use that many IPs. But I'm going to make my IP for my new LAN 10.0.0.10 uh, and hit enter. And in fact, let's just go 1. 10.0.0.1. Hit enter. And then it's going to go, what uh, subnet mask do you want to go with? Now, 255, 255, 255, or uh, 24 is already taken uh, by uh, the WAN port. So we're just going to go with 8. And then it's going to say, do you want to enable DHCP on the LAN? Which we do, because we want to be able to make it so that every time a new PC joins the LAN, it gets an IP. So we're going to go, yes. And the start address for the DHCP range, we're going to make 10.0.0.0. And we're going to end it at 10.0.0.254. And hit enter. Do you want to revert to HTTP as well? Configure it No, because I want HTTPS. Hit enter. And hit enter to continue. And there we go. Look, we now have our PFSense LAN port RE0 on 10.0.0.1. Uh, WAN port on 92.168.1.102 so what I'm going to do now is just to show you guys quickly I'm just going to close out of this browser here what we're going to do is going to come down to in fact I'm going to go over to the screencast now and show you guys because it's so much easier on the screencast uh, than holding the camera so uh, I'll meet you on there alright so obviously now we have our whole PFSense box set up we want to double check a few things so first things first we need to renew our IP uh, so let's go to CMD and let's do an IP config and let's see what IP we got at the moment um, ah that's good that's good looks like we've automatically been assigned it um, which is pretty good pretty good eh um, 
my PC before was set up on a class C network so it looks like it's automatically lost connection reconnected and I got this IP here um, obviously from the new DHCP server because remember I said that my desktop on one now connects to the LAN port on my PSense box again we won't have internet access yet so if for some reason yours still has the um, IP of class C or the wrong um, class of IP here what we want to do just come down here type IP config forward slash renew and what that'll do is contact the DHCP server kick your old one out and pull in a new one so that's all you got to type and then you'll start to get the new IP of the one that you set up so remember that we set up the IP of the PSense box we need to connect to that right now okay so we do that by going into our web browser and do uh, wrong one, doing 10.0.0.1 right that's the IP we set so we hit go and we make this bigger and obviously Chrome's being weird so it's going to proceed anyway and it's going to ask for the admin and pass, uh, password so the, ad, uh, the username is admin and the password is pfsense by default and we're going to save password and it's going to do the initial config for you does it really quick and we're just going to hit next host name pfsense that's perfectly fine domain I'm just going to call this skynet because it's cool um, for the primary DNS servers, I'm going to go for 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 and as a backup, I'm going to do 8.8.4.4. .4. These are Google's DNS servers. You could use your ISP ones if you wanted to, but they're generally awful. Um, so just go on Google's ones, go on Open DNS's ones. Uh, they're normally a lot faster anyway. So hit next. And here I'm going to select my place, which is Europe, London. There we go, that's fine, and time server there is fine. Hit next. Uh, here we don't actually need to set up anything because um, the WAN interface is DHCP anyway. Uh, even when you're connected um, from uh, your ISP, uh, obviously if you've got a static IP from your um, from your ISP, then put it in. But if you're normal and your IP will change um, like you know uh, your router IP will change then uh, just set up DHC, uh, DHCP because that's what changes your IP anyway we don't need to worry about this any um, triple, PO, uh, triple PoE stuff um, because that's just not how it's set up unless you're using your uh, PFSense directly from uh, I mean if you've got your literally coming out of the wall go straight into PFSense box then you'd need to put your triple PoE info in here um, otherwise, you know, it's just not going to work. So you put your username and information stuff like that. Uh, this is good. So just hit next, and the LAN IP uh, for the LAN interface. This is what we set up before. This is just pulling it from what we had earlier. Subnet mask is eight, which is just the two five five dot zero zero zero, which is fine. Hit next. Admin password. We can change this here. So I'm just going to change this to my little home home password either on all my routers and I hit next and if we hit reload this is then basically just gonna do some stuff on the server and or the PSense box and configure everything how it wants to um, and all that sort of stuff so we're gonna let this do what it needs to do um, I did this before it actually took quite a while um, so I'm hoping it does it a little bit faster today uh, if not then I'll have to come back Alright, so that didn't actually take too long, but it's done. Congratulations, PFSense is now configured. And one thing you will notice is in the bottom right -hand corner, we now have internet access. So it's basically working. So if I go open network here and go local area, details, our connection, Skynet. <laughs> See? Right, so that's working fine now. And my phone went off. Uh, what we need to do now is click here to continue to the PF configurator and as you can see my WAN IP which is the wide area network is configured and the LAN IP is going as well and if we go to uh, status then DHCP leases show all configure uh, this should actually be leasing one because we pulled one here uh, so let's just see if I do a renew 
see what I get. Could be interesting. Uh, right, okay. Don't know why I'm not getting... There we go. There we go, there we go. Status is online. Mac address, host name, start when the lease end comes in, how long the lease, when it will end, and the IP address it's leased from the server. So that's pretty much it really. If Obviously if we came into interfaces and then assign, uh, we could then add a new interface. Um, opt one, you'd set the Mac address of the card, and then you can set things like, uh, I don't know, um, uh, wireless access points and things like that. Uh, to your PS Sense box so you can get all your wireless devices connected to it as well because obviously phones and things like that and tablets don't have Ethernet sockets so you're not hardwired um, however it's still pretty cool to have everything going through your PS Sense box now I'll probably do an update video soon um, because like I said before at the moment this is going literally through WAN right oh no it's going through WAN but it's being assigned by a DHCP server my end so it literally it comes in with the public IP into my router which takes the public IP which then assigns uh, DHCP IPs to each individual client and one of the uh, nodes on the network is literally my um, my PSSense box so it's the right pain uh, I literally want to have my WAN IP here as my public IP because then I can just do all the the firewall stuff everything um, going through uh, my PF Sense box without having to worry about anything else getting in the way. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, sorry if it's been a little bit boring at times, but you know, hey Um If you enjoyed this video, then give it a like. If you want to see more videos from PF Sense and things like that, then definitely hit that like, uh, like button. And if you've got any issues with your PF Sense box or want to know anything, then do let me know. I'm going to continue to do some more videos. Um, on setting some more stuff up like you know creating and pa uh, adding packages and setting out different services so such as you know um, proxies and caching and uh, filtering and, and stuff like that so we'll definitely get into that sort of stuff which is going to be pretty good so uh, anyway thank you very much for watching hope you enjoyed this video take care